Hey and welcome to another ICH2 video. Um, this video is quite special. Yep, it is. There's something I've never done before, personally. Um, you may remember that not so long ago we did a review of the Class 40. And, well, the, the, new, the new and improved revamped Class 40 by Batman. And I put a rake of these behind it, which are Batman uh, Mark 1 coaches in BR livery. They're absolutely beautiful coaches, they really are lovely. Uh, really, really nice. And what's so good about the new Batman 40, uh, Class 40, is that they've done lights. They've put lights in it, finally. Uh, before that you had to buy lighting kits that are about £20-£25 and do it all yourself. But now the Batman Class 40 does come with lights. However, it looked quite odd, didn't it, that we were driving that locomotive around and it had no lights. Um, sorry, it had lights, but the coaches had no lights. The coaches had no lights at all. And it didn't look quite right. So I asked people if they'd like me to do a video on fitting lighting to coaches. And you overwhelmingly said yes. <laughs> um, there were literally hundreds of comments and messages and tweets asking me to, to do the lighting. So I'm going to do the lighting. Um, to do the entire rake would cost about £100 because the lighting strips I'm using are ready-made and they're about £20 each. So to do five is obviously five times 20, which is a hundred pounds. And that's a little bit too much. Uh, it is to do all in one go. And so I thought I, I'd do it in stages. I might as well do it in stages. I can at least do one and show you how to do it. And then I can add to that over time, can't I? And you can go out and build it up over time as well. There's no need to do it all in one go. It's quite a bit to spend just on lighting in one go. <laughs> You know, um, so I thought, well, let's just get one and um, see how we get on. So there's our Batman uh, Mark One coach there, and then the lighting kit is this. Here we go. It's by Train Tech, the people at Train Tech, um, which is look at this. This is which this is what's really really cool. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Train Tech designed and made in Great Britain. Oh yes, it's not often you get to um, read that these days. So something for something to be designed and built in the UK is pretty good. Pretty good. So here we have a Traintech CL2 coach lighting strip. So you can see the actual strip just here. There it is. So you've got one, two, three, four, five lights on it. And then there's a space here for a CR2032 battery, like a watch type battery, which they do give you on the back. Look at that. They even give you the battery. Now that's pretty good. So to give you a CR2032 battery and the lighting strip um, for, well, this one was priced up at £20. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Hopefully it'll be nice and easy to fit as well. Um, they do two types. They do like a, a soft sort of yellowish glow. Uh, and then they do like a really harsh, bright white and I've gone for the, the soft yellow glow because this is a Mark I coach and they typically would have had a sort of soft glow inside them. In fact, the coach is split up into lots of little compartments. So you've got like a corridor running down the side and then you've got all these individual compartments. Um, just like the old coaches used to be before it all became open plan and, well, I don't like that type as much. Um, <laughs> this type's much more romantic. <laughs> unless you're trapped in there with someone that stinks, in which case it's a nightmare. But this is a Mark I type um, light fitting, and I thought that that was perfect. Um, I suppose you'd use like the, the other type, the harsh bright white, for um, maybe like a Class 153, or a Class 170, or really modern coaching, like Mark III coaching or Mark IV coaching suck. Um, but this, this type of older, orangey yellowish glow is perfect for the older coaches so that's why I got that type. Um, I also picked up a few other things which I want to very very quickly go through with you. I also picked up one of these because there's only a fiver and this is also by Train Tech and this is a track tester. Now I know you're waiting to see the proper layout and it's getting close plus we've got the end gauge here going on now and then there's of course this there's still the testing layout downstairs in the conservatory that's used for reviews so I just thought this would be like a fantastic little tool to add to my little kit basically and it's basically just a track tester and you can just pop it on double O or engage track and it tells you whether it's powered how much it's powered by and um, 
well, it shows, shows voltage, continuity, and polarity. Brilliant. And I thought, well, this company seems so, so good. Um, and we're going to cover loads more by them in the future. That I grab one. You know, it's only a fiver. So, but what I really, really want to show you is, well, because we're taking the coach off. Sorry, because we're taking the roof off the coach, uh, and we're putting lighting in. I might as well put some people in too. So there we go. <laughs> We've got two little packs of people here by, uh, what company is it? Them. It's them. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that, okay? Because in the past I have made attempts and I just have, quite unfairly I think, it's quite harsh, people coming down on me like a ton of bricks saying, that's not how you pronounce it. Oh gosh, you're an insult to our country. Well, sorry. That's a bit un that's a bit unreasonable, isn't it? So I'm not even going to try, okay? But that company there. So I've bought two little packs of assorted people by them, and they're all sat down. I mean, there's even a guy there reading the paper, and oh, there's an old man clutching his bag. So it's perfect, isn't it? Absolutely perfect. Now they're ready painted, and they're about seven pounds per pack. So they're not cheap, but because they're ready painted, uh, which brings me on to this. Again, by the same people. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it, you can do that yourself. Um, this is a little bit more, £9.50, but look at all those people. Look at all those. And if I just turn it round, can you see the sprue there with all the people on? So I'm going to do that in a future project, basically. I shall do that in a future video. Um, it's, it, now, some of you might be screaming at the screen going, what are you thinking, painting all those tiny little people? It's not that hard. I mean, years and years ago, I used to do, I don't know if you've heard of the Warhammer stuff, the Warhammer 40,000 stuff. I used to be quite into that, and I used to paint all the little figures, and I even bought um, little uh, Woodland Scenic grass, Woodland Scenic, the, you know, the grass stuff in the bags, the scatter grass. I used to put that on the base and make it dead realistic. So I think I've got a hand steady enough. I mean, I wouldn't trust, I wouldn't trust myself doing open heart surgery, but... I think my hand is steady enough to do uh, the paintings of these little people. So I'm going to give that a go because value for money, that pack is brilliant. You get loads of people. And if, we're, if we are going to all this effort to open up a coach, then we might as well put people in the coach and light it as well. And so that's going to be for future coaches. That's not today. I shall use these two for today. We'll sit some of these people in and then light them up. And... You can just use humble enamels or even acrylics and Tamiya paints, anything really. Like this is a lovely skin tone. Um, and okay, it's going to take a while to do all those people, but you know, I'm in no rush. Um, and once I'm done, I'm going to have enough people there to easily put into a couple of coaches. So yeah, it represents good value basically. And I just wanted to show it you. So the first step to do then. The first thing to do is to take the roof of this Backman coach off. Now, it's not that hard, really. The only thing you've got to be careful of is the um, the wiring at the end. There's like um, there's some little metal cabling at the end, so I need to pop that out ever so gently, and at that end too. But once that's done, you can see there. I've already started. That basically, the roof is just going to come away. There's no need to go underneath, there's no need to take the bogies off or do anything like that. The actual roof compartment itself will come off. But when I did start it earlier, um, I noticed that because it is an old coach that's lined, a corridor coach that's lined with these compartments, I'm going to have to, I might have to snip the tops of these compartments off um, so that the, you know, the, um, the lighting strip can fit along, can run along the inside of that roof without colliding with anything without hitting any obstructions and stuff. Um, it also means that, as you can, as you probably worked out, that some of the compartments are going to be lit and some of them are going to stay dark. Some of them will be brighter than others um, and some of them will be barely lit at all. But that's just realistic. That adds to the realism. There's no need to worry about that. It's really unrealistic for all the coaches to be fully lit, for all the compartments to be fully lit. Some people would be asleep, some compartments would be completely empty, and some people will have the lights on and they'll be reading a book or a paper. So I'm not worried about that at all. I think that's going to look quite good once you've finished. Um, if you're wondering how it's all powered and how it all works, um, just before I put it in, basically it's motion sensitive. So. As you, once you put that battery in, the thing, the thing bursts into life, and that's it. Um, and then there's a timer, 
apparently, I don't know, we'll have to wait and see, but there's a timer and it'll switch itself off after four minutes. But the moment it detects any movement, so like the moment you pick it up, or the moment a train couples up to it and starts moving off, it will come on and it will stay on. And because it's only, because they're only tiny LEDs, um, the battery is good to last for, well, I don't know how many hours, but I should imagine it's quite a lot of hours worth of running time. And if it just sits there for four minutes until it goes off, well, that's not too bad, is it, really? And even if you have to change the battery quite frequently, because the train is run a lot, it's not that hard to just whip the roof off and swap the battery over. Um, as, as, as for fixing it to the roof, I'm going to use double-sided tape, I think. Um, the same double-sided tape that was used on sections of the N-gauge, I'm going to use little bits of that to just firmly affix it to the roof, to the, you know, the ceiling, the inside of the roof. So, it's time to get this off then, and I will see you um, in a second. Okay, well you join me about three minutes later. Um, as you can see, our coach has been in quite a tragic accident. <laughs> no, it's fine, honestly. Um, basically, as I say, with the little bits of metal that were coming down off the roof, um, you basically just flip those out at the coach end. Don't take them off the roof. Take them off the end of the coach itself. And leave them attached to the roof. And then this one on its own was a little bit trickier. I had to get some uh, pliers in there and tweeze it out, but it did move eventually. And so that's it. There you go. The roof comes off. So we can put the roof to one side, but this is where the, that's where the strip will run down. Um, now this is what I was on about. Um, look, do you see, do you see like the compartment section, that really big brown sort of reddish compartment piece of plastic? Well, that could be a bit of an issue. I may need to cut out a chunk of every one of those so that the strip doesn't hit anything when we put the roof back on, basically. Um, but, you know, something like the track cutters um, by Zuron, you know, they're more than capable of doing that sort of job. And again, um, you know, if you've got like a pair for just doing general sort of model work and you keep a pair for actually your actual track work, then you don't need to worry about blunting them or anything like that. I mean, they're only about 10 or 15 pounds. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. But we'll get the, we we'll might as well get the lighting strip out and have a look at it. So here we go. Let's just cut the, um, the top off taking care not to damage anything. There we are. Very nice. It's all very well um, presented, by the way. It's um, very impressive. So there's our little battery. We can take that off. Okay, fitting instructions. Setting up, fitting the battery. Slide battery, plus side up, positive side up, in under gold contact first then push down. Once the battery is fitted, the LEDs should light. The slightest movement automatically switches them on. See, that's what I told you about. Remove the roof from your coach. Oh, we've already done that. Um, tip. Sometimes the roof and body are all in one piece and unclip, unscrew from the chassis, and sometimes the roof comes off on its own. Model shops and manufacturers also offer advice. So yeah, basically, basically they're just covering themselves, aren't they? They're saying, be careful, every coach is different. And as I've showed you with this Batman Mark I coach, the roof does come off on its own. It looks quite odd now, doesn't it? Looks like it's undergoing restoration. It's quite, it's quite cool. Two, fit the lighting strip into the roof. Use blue tack or sticky pads to hold it in place if required. If model has a metal roof, insulate first using tape. Well, obviously that makes sense, yep. Refit the roof. You have completed installation. <laughs> Lights will switch off automatically four minutes after the last movement. Um, and then there's additional information on the battery. When the lights become dim or intermittent, replace with a new battery. Um, other coaching strip lights. Uh, Train Tech offer lighting strips with cool or warm white LEDs, plus an extra effect like flashing tail or flickering flame tail lights, electric spark effects, and automatic amber door lights. Ask for a free Train Tech brochure. So, gosh, and look at that. Now that's cool. And on the inside, you can even see the other stuff they do, such as, like, there's the track tester I told you about. Um, lights for buffers, uh, one-touch DCC the signals, uh, DCC point controllers, um, self-assembly lighting kits, more signal controllers, and then this is what I've got to do. I've got to get a lovely little flickering red light for the back of um, a brake fan or 
you know, a, a rake of old-fashioned coaches or something. I cannot wait to do that. Right, so let's detach this strip then. Oh, it's just held in place with a bit of glue. But I'm being very careful not to uh, obviously damage anything. Right, so that's it, that's that detached. I'm just going to take this really rather um, weird and bizarre glue that they use off. It really is strange, isn't it? Okay, so I've taken all the um, horrible gunky stuff off the strip and there is our lighting strip. That's where the battery compartment is. And then you can see all the little LEDs running down the strip. It's really quite slim. It's a very, very nice, slim profile device. So let's get the battery out. This shouldn't be too hard. It's just a, a CR2030 battery. It's kind of like the type that you get in um, electronic scales and watches and various little devices, really. So, apparently, upon inserting this, the whole thing should burst into life. Apparently. Let's see. Positive side up. Wow, wow. Look at that. If I just... Um, Dim the lights in the office here. <laughs> How cool! See, so that's what we're, that's what we're going to be doing essentially. Um, but yeah, that works really well, and this is all motion sensitive. I should just imagine that there's an absolutely tiny accelerometer in the um, the strip somewhere. You know, like the kind you have in your mobile phone, yeah, so that it knows when it's you know tilted portrait or landscape. I should imagine it's something like that. Maybe I don't know. Um, whatever it is, it's got to be quite cost effect um, cost effective, hasn't it? Uh, to keep the to keep the unit cost down. Gosh, why am I, why am I worrying about that? I'm not. <laughs> it's not my business. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So we need to now fit that to our roof. Something like that. And actually, it's a pretty generous roof. Um, that's pretty good. I don't think I'll have to cut much out of it, actually. Um, I'm, I think I need to make a few cuts, certainly down one end, where the uh, the battery goes, but this should be okay, it shouldn't be too bad. So I'm going to just lie that down there, and then I'm going to take my track cutters and prepare the coach. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, well welcome back. Um, as you can see our, our lighting strip is properly fitted now with double sided tape. Um, run along the whole inside of the roof there. The um, the compartments in the coach have been definitely modified. I've basically hacked away most of the top so that there's nothing to collide with the battery or the strip. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, I've checked. I've checked that the uh, the ends are right. So now it's just a case of fitting it, which is going to be a little bit fiddly, um, and it's going to be quite hard to show you. On camera you're not really going to see anything because of my arm in the way so <laughs> I'll stop the camera again and then cut back to the completed thing in a moment and we're back um, I won't lie it was pretty tricky <laughs> the roof went on really really well actually there were just a series of clips there were three clips on each side that just slotted into holes job done what was really tricky was the uh, the metal wire stuff that comes down off the roof Trying to get that to go back into a hole that's about a quarter of a millimetre in size, that was tricky. <laughs> but it only took about four or five minutes and the job is done, the job is complete. So if I just put the coach down now and then again kill all the lights. So that's the lamp gone and then the actual main lights. There we go. <laughs> you can see the lighting of the coach. Look at that. And I think it looks really realistic. You see how you've got like one compartment here, um, if you can see my finger. This compartment looks completely black, like there's nobody in, nobody in there at all. Um, you know, it's like it's a, a train making its way up from Bristol to, to Birmingham one late night on a Thursday in 1969 and it's chucking it down and it's horrible outside. And then there's not that many people on the train, but there's nobody, there's no one in that compartment at all. Absolutely nobody. But then the other compartments are quite well lit. And I just think that's a really, really nice touch. 
I know the camcorder is not really showing it off very well at the moment, but if I spin the coach right round, you can see that it's the same thing there on this end. Just absolutely. <laughs> it's just so realistic. The camcorder seriously isn't doing it justice. So how about I bring the lights up again? Um, and then we go and put the coach down on the track with the class 40 and um, look at the two lit up together. How about that? Quick, you join me on this really, really rather special event where just by the class 40 over there is a recently light strip fitted Mark 1 coach that's actually gone to sleep. Look. Oh, no! We've been gone! Well hey and welcome back, um, here's our class 40, just there, and those are the uh, Mark 1 coaches. Remember this coach here is the one that we've fitted with the lighting strip, but it's not um, lit at the moment because it's been sat still for more than 4 minutes so it's gone off, which is just as it should be. However, um, our Batman class 40 is still not chipped. Um, apologies for listening to the sound of the uh, washing machine in the background. <laughs> Um, yeah, our class 40 is still not chipped. The chip is faulty. <sighs> After It's taken two hours. This is two hours later, folks, and the uh, class 40 is still not chipped. And the body was removed, the chip was put in, and basically as soon as I put it on the track, the lights just started blinking like mad, and it didn't respond to any DCC signals at all. Um, and then it did. Uh, if you told the DCC controller to make it number 20 or number 23 or number 14, it would sort of like jerk violently in a certain direction. It was usually this direction, like coming, coming this way. It would usually jerk this way and then stop and just continue flashing. And that was it. It just refused, totally refused to respond to any signals at all. I thought, okay, that's a bit odd. So I tried another, uh, my, my, my first, my initial thoughts were that it was a DCC uh, controller. Because you know what these Hornby ones are like, they can be a bit dodgy. So I grabbed a, the nearest DCC fitted loco, which is this one here. The Caledonian Railway 040. Believe it or not, that has actually been DCC chipped. <laughs> so I tried that one, but it ran perfectly. Absolutely flawlessly. So. It's not the controller. So sorry, Hornby, you've done fine. So then the chip was taken out again and the loco was put back on the track and it was ran in DC mode. And it ran perfectly. Everything was fine. So then the chip was put inside the Midland compound. And that's when uh, we noticed that the Midland compound didn't run very well either. The Midland compound jerked violently in the opposite direction, uh, that direction. It went smack straight into the coaches and then we had to just kill the power basically and take it out again. So after two hours, because it's pitch black outside and that's the kitchen that you can see in there, after two hours our conclusion is the uh, Backman 21 pin DCC chip is faulty. Um, and that's really, really annoying, because the the, the fitting the light lighting strip went so well. It it honestly went so so well. And considering it's the first time I've ever done it, I'm really really proud of how well it's gone. And it's really annoying to be to be let down by the professionals. You know the the the, the huge dead dead professional company that is Batman. It's, it's dead annoying to be let down by them. Again! This is not the first time it's happened. I don't know what it is with these 21 pin chips, but this is about the second or third one we've had that's faulty. And I did see somebody say something on Twitter or in a comment um, ages ago. Someone did say be careful about those 21 pin chips. They can be faulty. And they were right. But Batman keep pushing this 21-pin stuff all the time. 
Ah, oh, annoying. So now I've got to take time out of my really, really hectic and busy schedule tomorrow and trundle over to the model shop to get that sorted when I really, really don't have the time. But I've got to do it because I can't do the video properly until I do it. So the best I can, well, the best sort of compromise I can offer to you, my viewers, at the moment is to run this locomotive in DC mode at reasonable speed with the coaches as well. That's the best I can do, I'm afraid. I wanted a fantastic shot of it all lit up, all stationary, but obviously I need it to be DCC to do that, and I can't do that, can I? So I'm going to mount the camcorder on um, a little mini tripod, just there, and I'm going to get some nice shots of it in DC mode. That's the best I can do. Okay, so we're back, and don't worry, it's not that we've been cut off because I haven't paid the electric bill. I have killed nearly all of the lights in the conservatory here so that we can see the lights in the recently fitted coach come to life. As I say, it's a shame the loco isn't lit up already because it should be in nice DCC mode, but it's not because the chip is faulty. So, um, don't worry, that's just a little bit of flicker because I'm changing direction. Um, the, the electricity light sort of gathers in the capacitors and stuff and when you flip direction it discharges and that's all it is, it's nothing, nothing to worry about. So, let's get the locomotive coupled up to the coaches and the minute it couples up to that coach you should see it burst into life. <laughs> Fingers crossed. You should see it light up. Um, so, let's see if that actually happens. Here we go. <laughs> there we go. It took a little bit of a, a shunt, didn't it? Um, it's not quite as sensitive as some people have been telling me it is, but it's come to life. And that is brilliant. <laughs> that genuinely is brilliant. In fact, if I just get it to go backwards a little bit further, and then I can get the locomotive to come past the camera at a reasonable sort of speed. Let's have a look at how good that is. <laughs> Ace, this is a shame the rest aren't lit yet. Here it comes. Oh, I'm sure you'll agree that the lit coach really does stand out. <laughs> It really, really does. Just look at that. That is beautiful. Oh, do you know, I can't wait to do the others. Look at it reflecting on the rails. And as I say, it looks like one compartment's just completely unoccupied. Just that one, there. And the rest are occupied. They've got people in them. It's brilliant.